All right, we're at Western Iowa Tech today here in our motorcycle and power sports uh, division. And what we're going to attempt to do is a couple different ways of how to remove uh, an oil seal. We're going to use some uh, tools that are made for it. We're going to do some unconventional methods. And then we're going to also demonstrate how not to do it as well. Now, we're working on this right now where the uh, crankshaft is not through the seal. We are going to demonstrate some ways that we can remove that seal, even if this was an assembled case. But as we start to take a look at this, Ross here is going to use some of these tools to, uh, to take these seals out. We talked about this in class, an everyday seal puller. Um, these are common to be uh, purchased through that Lyle brand that we talk a lot about from your auto parts stores or whatnot, or off the Mac and stamp on trucks and whatnot. Um, this is one that came out a few years ago um, that I really like. You can see it has a 3H drive. Uh, adapter on here. So what's cool about this is you can get in really awkward positions, especially you can get up somewhere that you need to be really nice and tight. Like you guys are watching those auto videos today where they're working in a, a pretty tight space. That would be super handy. Um, you could put extensions on it and twist it from here. You could do all kinds of funky things. And this is only like 10 or 15 bucks. Um, this here usually is what we have. It works well for us. We're going to get up under a seal and basically pull this out. What we're trying to do is dig into that. And what my recommendation was is that we go ahead and protect the other side uh, with a rag. Or another thing that I really like to use are those wood shims, like for doing doors and windows, because they're just easy to get and whatnot. So I could take a look at the two of these, and I'm, we definitely know we're going to ruin this seal. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. And I could kind of see which one's going to allow me to get up under that lip and to be able to pull it out. Either one of these should work fine. If I pull on it a little bit and it's uh, not coming, switch to a different spot, pull on a little bit and work your way around. And the idea is, is that we're not, no matter what, we do not want to take this sharp point. Is that sharp? We do not want to take that and drag that or dig that through the case. That's going to be the problem. So why don't you go ahead and try and uh, get that seal out of there. The other thing you'll notice too is, you know, take your time with it and actually, uh, if you're struggling with it, stop, look at it again, get a flashlight out, see what's the problem. And if this seal is installed properly, it should be in there. Yeah. Heck yeah, it should be. Paxton, so why don't you go grab the crankshaft for this vehicle? It's on, uh, do you know where uh, those guys are working on the very left lift if I'm shaking and uh, Oh, Mars. Okay. Now, he did that with no effort, just kind of took his time, worked around the case, didn't damage the case, and that's how you would properly remove this with this tool, okay? There's nothing out there. We saw the videos where we grab onto it, pull it off. Those are really cool tools, um, especially if you have a shaft that's through there. We're going to go grab the crankshaft right now and try and uh, demonstrate what it would be like to remove that with uh, with it installed, but that a pretty simple, easy way to do it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. On the installation here, we would go ahead and depending on the manufacturer, most everybody says to take this area, clean it with contact cleaner, have a good and spotless dry, clean the seal with contact cleaner. You want to take it, put some grease around. On this one, we don't even have to grease it now. We could grease the back side. We, we would grease the ID or the lip of the seal, and then we would go ahead and reinstall it. Well, one thing about these oil seals that we looked at in class here is that there's a flat side, which is going to be the outside, or going to be flush here, and on the inside, it's recessed to where we'll actually go, uh, we'll put that recessed side, and then the spring is facing towards the fluid, okay? So in this particular case, what we'd want to do is just get this nice and close, and we, need, we forgot to grab a hammer, your rubber mallet out of your toolkit. We're going to grab our steel driver. <clears throat> Take our seal here, match it up with something. This one's nice here, and we can see it'll go around the outside. I'm gonna be since we're going flush with this outside, I'm actually gonna go one size larger. So that I get a nice good flat surface. Does that make sense? That way if I get off a little bit, it won't want to tip and fall inside there. Does that make sense? So you have to see what the manufacturer says on whether you should put a real small amount of sealing on there. I like to do that on a lot of these seals, not crankshaft seals, but especially shift shaft and transmission output shaft seals. 
um, because with the sealant on there, it'll just actually push on the outside. And that's on older bikes, something that's being restored. You always don't know the integrity of what you're putting that into, right? So I've seen to uh, save some problems or save the day there. But you can take that mallet uh, right there and just kind of start getting it set. I'll let you go ahead and finish it. And what he's trying to do, you see how it tipped on here? So now I take this, and what, you're, what this tool comes with is this handle where we could thread this through. And most of the times I don't use this at all. It's just in the kit just in case. But I can just set it in there, and that gets my work area up. And now since I'm too low right here, what I could do is just move this over and tap it down. Go ahead and uh, install that. you got to be really careful to make sure that we're just going to go flush with it, right? Stay where it's too high. Don't even go over here. Go ahead and do it with a little bit middle because you're good and even. Knock her down in the middle and you hear how it's good and uniform and now we're going to take our finger and fill around that edge and life is good. It's nice and flush. Now obviously since we're just practicing here you can see how we popped it out and we put it back in. We would always use a new seal and then decide what to do from there. Make sense? This other seal that we're going to do next is uh, one that's kind of backwards from what we talked about. We always said that the dish side goes towards the inside. I'm betting when we go to pull this seal, we're gonna see that it's probably more than likely um, dished on, or excuse me, hollowed out on both sides, okay? So this is a what type seal? You guys saw that out of your textbook? The double lip, okay? So don't be confused by that. Now the installation of this one's gonna be pretty critical that we grab an appropriate socket to drive across there. We could still go across the OD of the seal this way, but if we slip down, we hit this spring, what do we do to the seal? We're gonna damage it for sure, okay? So um, a lot of people get in here as well, and what their thing is is, oh, I'm gonna replace this seal anyway, and they'll just wanna get in here and use a screwdriver and pop it up. Those two points right there really take a chance of dragging across there. I've run into this where I'll stick a screwdriver in there and sometimes I grab a screwdriver because that's just the best tool to get that seal out. If I'm fighting this or this is being a problem, this is another area where those wood shims come in nice because I can stack them up which raises my, my leverage. Does that make sense? So if I get up here more, I can have more leverage to pop that up by using some of those wood shims. Does that make sense? If I'm doing any of this, what's going to go underneath the screwdrivers? Right. Rags so that it protect that case. Make sense? Okay, why don't we go ahead and on, uh, we can use, let's say, we'll just use this crank seal, and let's say that this thing is just being a bear. We've tried prying on it, it doesn't want to come out, it's really stuck in there. We've tried our seal polar, and it's stuck in there and it's not going very well. One of the things we're going to do is use a slide hammer. We're going to take a wood screw, drill pilot hole, being very careful not to get into the bearing. Go ahead and start uh, getting ready for that. We want to be smaller than our wood screw. Drill pilot hole, thread that in, and we're going to grab onto it with a slide hammer and basically slide hammer it up. Now, you guys watched a video on YouTube today where a guy had a lot of success just taking the wood screws, threading them in, which would walk the seal up. And why did I say I didn't really care to do that, at least in our Power Sports video? I don't know what he was what he was really working on, but why did we not want to do that on Power Sports uh, oh, engines? Bearing. The bearing that's behind there. We don't want to take that wood screw, digging that into that bearing. It just wouldn't be a good practice. So you did the last one, Paxton. Let's throw some safety glasses on you. Okay. And let's get in here. And we're going to drill uh, our small pilot hole first. Now, we said that when we're drilling the hole, what do we got to use a lot of caution on? If we don't do it too far, that's one, because we're not going over the whole thickness. You gotta stay steady in the street so it doesn't walk all over the place. We're not drilling this thick. We're only drilling, you gotta remember this is hollowed out. We're only drilling, you know, 40, 50 thousandths thick. That's all we're doing. So go ahead and drill that. We'll see how, how easy it is to pop through on that, but it's a pretty good job. Okay, now right now we'd want to take, I would say take a rag, put some grease on it, and let's just dab around there. 
and we're going to pick those metal filings up. Does that make sense? We want them out of there as, as fast as possible. So now, let's grab that more aggressive wood screw. And now you got a pilot there. You're going to go ahead and uh, screw that in. Now, would it be safe to grind off that sharp tip even though we're not going to take it down and press against the barrel? I haven't had any issues where I needed to because I'm not using it that way, but sure you could. But then, with the sharp tip, at least it, uh, since we're doing a real small diameter pilot, it goes through. Now, if you wanted to take that back out, then grind it off, or maybe have two screws, one that has a ground tip and one that doesn't, that might be an option too. So this is a homemade jobby that we made here for a slide hammer. It's just so universal. To be able to get this to tighten up here, we take and just uh, thread this like so until we get that nice and close there. That's probably possibly uh, close enough to grab the head of that. We're gonna grab on this. Do not, make sure and have this down so you don't pinch your hands between the hammer and the slide. Grab onto that. Not, not enough yet. Now go light, light taps on to see how this is going to work. Then go a little harder. It's kind of, you guys see that? Can you see that in the video? Go ahead and finish it. Yep. All right. What do you guys think of that process? You can see the bearing that's down here. Now we won't move the bearing. We're going to flash that. You heard that drill bit pop through, right? So there's no damage. It isn't like he had enough. He wasn't sitting there and drilling. As soon as he was through, he let off, and it's going to be fine here. A lot of metal filings in there. The, the reason that this is so nice is, you the crankshaft, is let's picture that we're working on the vehicle, okay? And this is, uh, we'll get the side here. Yeah, this should be. This isn't the right crankshaft, is it? I think we went off the white. Oh, this is out of KX, but it'll still work for right now for the example. If this is in the frame on the bike and all you're wanting to do is replace that seal, you don't have room to get in here without potentially damaging the crankshaft, and that's why we're doing the drill bit and the slide hammer method. It's really nice too because with the engine in the frame, the bike tied down, you probably do this by yourself because you don't need anybody to hold that thing. Does that make sense? No. So that's the example that we use there. A couple different ways to do it. We grab our, uh, our new seal here. We can actually see how this has, it's, it's dished on both sides. And you might ask yourself, well, how do I know which way to put this in? If it's dished on both sides, does it matter? Yes. Would you say that Yamaha made these little grooves in here for a reason? Okay, so what I would do to, why don't you guys tell, tell YouTube out there what you would do, what I've taught you so far, to try and figure out which way is the right way to put this seal in. So Service Manual is a great resource. They're going to show through some pictures which side these ribs go in or towards, right? But if you didn't have a manual, what's another source we use? The microfish. Thanks, Lionel. We're going to go ahead and take a look at this seal. If this had the ribs facing out, we'd be able to go to the microfish. We would see that. We'd be able to identify which direction it needs to go into that hole. Make sense? Mm -hmm. So we would take this, find the appropriate size OD driver, and just since we're making a video on this, something to think about. A lot of years of my career, uh, the way I was taught is we always put seal in around every seal. And a couple years ago, I told you guys in class how at the Articat factory training school for snowbills and ATVs, they made a big deal that they will not warranty an engine if you install ring seals with seal in on here and then sandwich them between the cases. They say it distorts the seal and you lose some of that sealed uh, crankcase capability. So always check the manual. Uh, find out what they're saying. Nine times out of ten, we said that these are going to be spotless, dry. The case is going to be dry with what? Contact cleaner. Contact cleaner, and we're going to drive them in accordingly and put them in. This one here, we definitely want to go around the OD of this. I'll have you go ahead and install that. If you want to use that handle, you can uh, square that up.
nice. You hear where you got real consistent and even all the way around? If you have that seal cocked in there, what do you think that does to the crankshaft? Right, so you're going to leak on one side and you're be rubbing too hard on the other, so you're going to have a problem there. So he's making sure that's even all the way around. Do you also see why, even though this comes in the kit, do you see why I don't like to put the bolt on? It allows me some flexibility to move this around, do what I need to do, and I can, you know, swap things real quick. If I'm not happy with this and I'm thinking, you know, I just wish I had a larger one in here so that I definitely don't accidentally go in. This one here, I could put it about anywhere in here and I'm not going to have any problems and be able to just get her going square, right? Yep. So that's how you do this, and that's it for our video today. Thanks, guys.